think I'm going live. Is this going live? Are people on here with... I'm not Jeff. Um, my name is Greg Harris, and I am one of the pastors at Northview. And uh, Jeff is in an elders meeting currently. And he is... Um, he's not here, so I'm covering for him. And uh, Annalise said she wants to join the conversation because we're going to talk. I pressed it. Did it work? View. Go Anna Lee, I pressed the button. I'm waiting for a connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Amazing. Hello. It worked. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> How's it going, Anna Lee? Oh, it's good. Oh, I just Where got some back music. One second. Are you at a club? Are you clubbing? Um, you know, no, I'm not. Is that a physically distanced club? Amazing. <laughs> No, we, like... got it. we got it. We got the music turned off. Amazing. Okay. Sorry. Hey, no, it's good. Um, Anna Lee Friesen, me styles. Yes. How are you doing? Oh, it's still weird to hear Anna Lee Friesen together. Gotta admit it. But I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm great. Good. Uh, for those of you guys who are tuning in just now, um, I am not Jeff, uh, but this is Anna Lee. You were promised an appearance from Annalie Friesen. And if there's one thing that Northview will do, it's deliver on our Friesen content. <laughs> we will find a way to get Friesens up and doing their thing. Um, Annalie, why don't you uh, let people know uh, how you, what, your, what your connection is with Northview? How, like, what's your history with the church? Um, well, I've been at Northview my entire life. Um, grew up at this church and uh, a few years ago, five, six years ago, um, when we started doing Sunday night gatherings and uh, we had a meal back then, I started making the food at the meal and uh, uh, it was a good time. So I was in the, working in the kitchen just part time there and started getting really connected. I've been a youth leader for, been involved with youth for nine years now. So really connected yeah. then. And then, um, yeah. I, a year after starting with the kitchen, I started working with the youth department um, with Kyle Meeker when he was the youth pastor. Yeah. Kyle Meeker was the youth pastor then. Yeah, way back in the day, and just now. before Ron and then Luke. And yeah, here we are. Now Actually, Kyle has a large beard that makes him. Is, does he have a beard currently? I think he shaved it, didn't he? Not, it's, Kyle, it's not as large. Kyle's at his. For sure. Ky Kyle's at his best when he has a big old man professor beard because really that's his job is to sit in a corner with his headphones on and be an old man professor and be smarter than everybody else and help us all be smarter which helps us make disciples so you are um you did the youth thing yep. for how many years were you involved with youth staff uh so working in that department for five years um okay. yeah just transitioned out of that Start with during Kyle. I uh, started with Kyle and then Ron was youth pastor for a couple of years and then Luke became youth pastor. Okay. So, but Luke was an intern like me and Luke uh, have worked together for many years and that's like, been you go way back. Yeah, way back. So all that, that freezing, you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, um, the Sunday night gathering service connection because that's, that's where we work together. We, mm -hmm. we did the Sunday night gathering service together. I think, uh, did Paul Siemens help us out? Or who was that? Was that John Giesbrecht? What year was that when you were around doing the Sunday night that gathering? Were we still in center court then? Yeah. Yeah, we were in center court. Paul okay. was there a lot. It was, it was a happening service for a while there when we were okay. there, Greg. We had, we had a good time. And then <laughs> you moved on to better things and you left <laughs> us alone. And then we struggled from that point on. No more uh, sauce. Uh, come on. No more FASPA. That's right. <laughs> um, why don't you give people a little bit of uh, insight into you've had a crazy last, I mean, a crazy last few years in a lot of ways, uh, but kind of experienced it even more so in these last few months. So you had a wedding planned mm -hmm. and it did not go according to your dreams and plans. But more than once, this has been a bit of your story. So Phil... <laughs> Fill in our dear listeners a little bit into your into the life of Anna Lee and what's going on in 
in the last few years and months? Yeah. So most recently, yeah, we had planned um, a wedding, me and Cody Friesen, uh, who is our youth pastor, Luke Friesen's brother. Um, we were supposed to be married April 4th um, with a big wedding, giant wedding at Northview. Like it the was... biggest wedding possible, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Was, I, so I got an invitation to this wedding and I felt very honored. And then I heard that everyone in Abbotsford essentially had found a way to be invited to this thing. It's true. So it was still I'm an sorry. honor. I digress. It still... It's not about yeah. me. <laughs> this is your story. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we had planned, we're big planners, Cody and I, so everything was like set, good to go. We were excited for April 4th, and then March 14th happened, and everything started shutting down. Yeah. And then um, we were like, okay, gatherings of 250. Well, that's not big enough for our wedding, because we were expecting 500. <laughs> so yeah. um, we started thinking over the weekend, how do we do this with 250 people? And then the Monday after that, um, it went down to the 50 people gathering and our dreams started to crash and burn. And we were like, okay, what do we do? And um, yeah, all this weird Corona COVID stuff was really new and no one really knew what to do. And so within the space of the week, um, I think by Wednesday, we decided to move our wedding to March 22nd, which was that Sunday. And yeah. then, um, yeah, we ended up just having a tiny, tiny, tiny wedding with just our immediate family and a photographer mm. and videographer. And um, Ron, you know, he married us. So all the family there. And um, yeah, it was the exact opposite of what we thought we were going to have. And um, yeah. that's so, so many good things. The Lord... <laughs> Um, blessed us with and taught us through that um mm. yeah but like definitely hard a week of crying and a week of praying and asking what are you doing and yeah. it was um yeah not not the first time like you mentioned that I've had dreams kind of crash and be like what's happening um yeah it was like around this time last year that I think I shared my story during mm -hmm. one of our sermon series at church about just being in a relationship almost engaged thinking I was getting married um, yeah. six or seven years ago. And then that out of nowhere ended and yeah. out of my choice ended. And I had no idea why and struggled to understand what God was doing in that situation yeah. and just coming through that and being like, what is God doing and having to deal with, yeah, making plans see how things should go it all works out we're you know following god doing all the right things we think and then yeah. the plans don't happen the dreams fall apart and mm -hmm. yet see him sovereignly work through that and still knowing his goodness through it that doesn't change even though everything else changes right yeah yeah you've you've definitely tasted that uh you know providence having the change of of direction from what we're anticipating right and so yeah, which I think is super relatable, right, for people in the season because that's basically everyone's story. At this point. We're, yeah. we're all in a season where I don't think many of us had, you know, May, what is it, May 26th? What month is it even? Like, what's happening? But, you know, we nothing's really going according to our plans. But So how have you found, we've, we've been going through the Esther series, and you are now working in our discipleship department. Mm -hmm. Um how are you finding this series interacting with your with your your you know your story of God's providence and changing plans and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's been cool. I've been reading Esther and working um, with Crystal because we actually were getting to like put together some weekly things for just mm. the studies that we're doing. Those weekly studies, I worked with Crystal to do that, and so we've been reading ahead and looking at Esther, and it's such a story of. Yeah, you, you see God working behind the scenes because we know the whole story. So when you read the whole book, you see that, right? When you're in the moment in chapter two with Esther, as we just heard on Sunday, like yeah. what is happening? What's going on, right? You don't know the whole story yet. But when you look at the whole arc of Esther, you see and you look back and you're like, oh, there's all those little pieces mm. that God was together. And I love that because um, 
yeah, looking back at my own story, and I think a lot of us can, we look back and we see pieces that were like, oh, well, God used that and that and that, and that was really horrible, and that was actually me making a mistake, and that was this, but God's used it to bring me to this place. And so it's fascinating for me to look back and, like, I'm married to Cody now, who I've actually known since grade 10. And just the pieces that God has worked to bring us to where we are today um, is incredible. And it's, it's like, how did I get to marry this man who I was friends with in grade 11 and we were just crazy and never would have expected that. And then worked with his brother and then worked with his dad and then never expected anything. And yet God brought us together. And um, yeah, really cool to see little pieces in that. And uh, so when we look at Esther, and I think it was interesting too, I loved that Jeff brought up this weekend that um, like there's some good things about Esther, like she made lemonade of her situation, but also she's like, we don't admire all of the things about her, but what we admire is later on in the story, right? It's the whole story of Esther and Mm. what she does later in, in her faith later that we see that it's the big picture that we see in Esther and, mm-hmm. and her working with what she knows and doing the right thing and making those choices and, um, and God using it no matter what. Like the story's not about Esther, it's about God and God using these things and showing his sovereignty in saving his people. And he does that in our individual lives and he does that in the world. And um, yeah, so I've seen that in my life and I know lots of us when we look back, we see that in our lives. Yeah. So you um, have a real love for the word and for teaching and for discipleship and you're getting training and pursuing more schooling, that kind of stuff. Talk, talk to us about some of the, the dreams, the hopes, the, the plans, the, the ways you're, you're hoping that the Lord uses you in the days to come. Yeah, um, I have been... I think because of just some weird things and hard things in my past and that whole thing with a past relationship, I feel like I ended up not knowing what I was supposed to do. And I never planned to be in ministry or working in a church, but God brought me through Sunday night gathering, working in the kitchen <laughs> and, <laughs> and then youth ministry um, yeah. really grew my heart to, to discipling first teens and then getting involved in our, um, one of the women's precept ministries at Northview to being more involved in even um, in other different ministry contexts and being given an opportunity last year to teach at these and um, the women's precept and also obviously being involved with youth and growing in that has really, um, yeah, three or four years ago was like, I need to do this. This is what I'm called to. It was a slow call for me. It wasn't like a, you're called to ministry, Mm -hmm. but um, like a little pieces of God being like, no, I want you to use these gifts here. I've given you this gift and having that affirmed and others telling me that before I knew it myself was cool. Um, And then, yeah, taking risks and trying. And I love the word. I love the opportunities we have at Northview to study. Um, Mm -hmm. And then being able to find ways to teach that. Mm -hmm. And I love multi-generational teaching. I love being able to be involved with youth and then the young adults and then the women's ministry and I love my small group at precept that's a mix of all ages and we encourage and love one another as a church body and um yeah so I'm actually slowly but surely working on finishing my um bachelor's of arts in ministry and um getting to work with crystal and discipleship is a really cool opportunity to grow and use new gifts and different gifts and I'm really looking forward to finishing this degree and seeing where God takes me from there Um, to keep building his kingdom however he gives me opportunity in whatever opportunity that that comes whether it's youth or women's or something else yeah I always uh I make fun of Crystal a lot at the office because I feel like she's like this like little hidden gem of our staff that like is this little workhorse that does so much and she touches stuff and it turns to gold Mm -hmm. and so yeah working alongside her is going to be I mean I've enjoyed my time working alongside of her and the times I have and so you having that opportunity in the season now too to kind of let's be honest it's a step up from Luke uh, (laughs) which is not hard but is also no I I like Luke also um but no it I, I do think 
having you in that discipleship department is going to really help our church. And I think it's going to not just give you opportunities, it's going to give our church opportunities to, to learn uh, alongside of you and learn from you. And so what's your perspective on all this kind of crazy, nothing's the same, and none of our ministries are going the way we thought they would. And it seems like this is going to be a long haul. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, what's the Anna Lee Friesen, me styles perspective on how can we make the most of this moment from a discipleship perspective of discipling the people around us and helping people be students of Jesus? Tell, tell me, your, what's your angle? What's your insight on, on how we can live that out in this season? Mm. I, some parts of it are so frustrating, for sure, especially like my heart to be with church, to be with the body and to be together. Um, but parts of our opportunity with this time excite me in talking about small church in your home, having people in our homes. Um, I think that's something that we've lost in our culture, uh, just getting together with families, having food, doing that kind of thing. And maybe slowly starting to be able to do that as restrictions allow us to gather and have church together with families is exciting. I think um, I was just chatting with another, um, another lady today about women's and just the potential of, okay, well, what does it look like to do? Maybe we go back to precept groups in homes and doing mm. Bible studies in homes and like the hospitality opportunity of that and using so many more people getting to use their gifts and share their gifts and, to love one another in a small community. I think what excites me about this time is bringing back that small community. And Northview is amazing. And I've loved this church my whole life, but we're big. And I think we can take this, not that big's bad, but that there's said gift in small and yeah. it's hard to make a big church small, Yeah. but God's like, Hey, guess what? Now you're small. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah. So I think there's some really cool opportunities in seeing the good in the small yeah, and um yeah and building into each other individually um like i know with youth i'm a youth leader as well and taking that time to realize i need to track down individual youth girls and go for walks i can't just say i'll see them on a thursday and getting to hear their hearts more because we're all thinking a little bit more and we're all a little more introspective on our lives. And so then like, yeah, calling each other out, asking those bigger questions because we have nothing else to do but talk. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think there's some really cool opportunities we have to grow in that. It's not going to be easy and it's not a natural transition necessarily, but I know for me in this process, it's, it's being grateful for the things we do have and not being just, I have such a tendency to be angsty at the technology and mad at the, the restrictions, but what is the good things we can be grateful for that God has actually given us in these restrictions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. I know it's, I, I've been wrestling with that a lot too. We've been trying to think through how do we, you know, make, make the most of this season as, you know, as people who follow Jesus and want to help other people follow Jesus. What does that look like now and right. so I think there's still more questions than answers in a lot of it but I think you know as long as we're still asking that question and we're still keeping the main thing the main thing in terms of uh, trying to follow in the way of Jesus and try to encourage others in that and if they've been following him for a while great if they if they are coming back to the faith great if they haven't even started the journey yet maybe they will and so trying to find ways to engage with friends and neighbors, all that. It's, it's mm -hmm. good. And really discipleship ministries, right? I'm mostly discipleship ministries. Right. It's, it's kind of like the whole, the whole thing, the whole Christian life is about how do we disciple one another. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, let's go to some lightning round. Uh, the people need to know more things about you and not just <laughs> the big important Christian things. They need to know little things like what is your favorite food to order in from some some restaurant F favorite order in food favorite order in you know we've been ordering or doing pickup during covid my yeah. favorite one that we have done i think was brodeurs actually oh, great food yeah. at brodeurs and okay. you know you can't go there but you can go get their food okay um i'm also like i'm always a chinese order in person too like okay. yeah, I yeah. Love the chinese yeah good good um what about your favorite you said you said you were working in the kitchen for Sinai Gathering. What's your favorite meal to make yourself? So not to pick up, but one that you are going to make. Ooh. 
is it the Northview hash brown casserole? <laughs> is that your favorite meal to make at home? You know, I've never made that at home, actually. Okay. <laughs> Too many times at church. But the recipe is only portioned for 400 people at a time. Exactly. So... How do you do that, right? Like, <laughs> I don't have freezer space for that. <laughs> um, I love actually making Thai curries. Oh. That's one of my favorites. What is the deal? People love Thai food. I don't get it. <sighs> Come on, Greg. Okay. Haven't you been to Thailand? I did. Okay. You want to hear my Thailand story? Yeah. You probably don't, but I'm going to tell it anyways. <laughs> so I went to Thailand and this was before I knew I was gluten-free and I felt terrible the enti entire time. <sighs> and uh, all I ate was toast and peanut butter. And now looking back, I should have had more rice dishes. Mm. It was yes. actually the toast and peanut butter that was probably making me feel exponentially <laughs> worse. So maybe you blame I, need it on give, Thailand. I need to give Thai, Thai food a different chance, you know? You do. Yep. Um, what is besides the club music that started our little conversation here today? What is what's the favorite music to listen to for the the Cody and Anna Lee Friesen household? Is it the Gaither music band? You know, my dad would wish that was so. Bruce, wow. yeah. Bruce Styles, elder of our church, mm. and also in a meeting with Jeff, which is why I'm here doing this live instead of Jeff. Right. Which again, my apologies. The disappointment people feel when they expect to see Jeff and they see me is a. Uh, is a theme of my ministry. <laughs> and so you're not alone. Um, so not the Gaithers. What's the music? What's the music choice? You know, Greg, I am not very music savvy or pop culture savvy, uh, much to Cody's sadness. So Cody's got great music taste. And we, Cody he likes, he's outside. Okay. But, yeah, um, it, just, it looked like you were looking at him. And I'm looking at him outside. So then your answer would be um, One Direction. Or what's what's a K-pop band? Like a Korean oh. pop? No? What about, um, okay, we can digress. Yeah, no. So uh, our music is whatever Cody wants to listen to. He loves a good bop. So Cody's uh, Justin Bieber all the way. Okay. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, if you could travel to any place in the world right now for a week, where would you want to go? Um, hands down, Mexico. Go do our honeymoon we were supposed to have. <laughs> where was this? Sorry. Mexico. That was where uh, we were supposed to go. And then actually we were going to go to Disneyland. So, you know, all of okay. that got killed. But one yeah. day we'll go. So, like Disney's got to be losing a lot of money and all this. Hey, so are they like, what are they going to do with is Disneyland going to be like exponentially more expensive or cheaper? Oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an economist and I'm also not an epidemiologist. I know so, so few things that are helpful in the COVID season. <laughs> um, I know, right? Hey, if, if you are watching this conversation, you know, Annalie, you have any questions for her, you want her to bring up, feel free to throw those in the comment. Also, I have no idea what time it is. I'm going by the sun outside. Uh, and so do you see a clock? Can you see a clock? I can't, and I know I was thinking that too. Can't I don't see want, when you're, when you're I don't live. Want people to get all mad if we go way over time. I guess they would just sign off, anyways. Yeah, they'll just it's fine. They'll just leave. So, um, did you say where you're doing your schooling through? No, but I'm doing it through Prairie Bible College Institute, something. So that's all online then for you. Yeah. Hello? Yep. All so, on. sorry, pause. I'm. Oh, I'm thank here. you. We have six minutes. <laughs> thank you. Countdown is on. Oh, but, someone else has seven minutes. So I'm going to go with the six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so Prairie yeah, online. online. It's, I haven't started a class since COVID and I don't want to because I'm already on my computer all the time by myself. So I don't want to do more, but um, I will. We'll do it okay. again. Luke Friesen wants to know what kind of dog is the best dog. Oh. My dog, obviously. <laughs> what is that? What is, is that a, that's a schnauz? Sh 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 I don't know dogs. <laughs> it's, he's a mix. It's okay. You would never be able to guess. He's okay. Border Collie Lab and Golden Retriever. So. Three. Yeah. I didn't know that's how dogs could, I didn't know there could be. Okay. There you go. Uh, do you have a favorite Friesen besides Cody? Oh, that's, that's not fair. Super easy. Can I pick my sister, Danae? Yeah, hundred percent. You can pick your sister. <laughs> this is an angle that I think people need to hear. That the people on the internet need to hear is that your sister is named Danae, 
Mm-hmm. She married Luke Friesen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you married Luke's brother, Cody. So you guys are like exponential brother and sister-in-law somehow. Yeah, so it's like we're like Luke's... Danae. You're like, like you're like Luke's aunt or something. Is that how it works now? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we're like double in laws. No, I think it's I think you're his aunt. I think that's how it works. Sure, we can we can um, Are your kids going to be siblings technically? I don't think so. We don't have the same DNA. But, you know, they'll be double cousins. So Okay. <laughs> double cousins. Yeah. Amazing. Um yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what is your go-to favorite summer evening activity? Ooh. You have a nice summer evening, summer's coming, it's warm out. What do you like to do? I love a good hike in the forest for like watching the sunset and some campfire. Really? I guess. Yes. yes, Greg, hiking you get all the ticks. way. You get a tick for a tick. hike. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um... Sarah and I went on a nature walk a few days ago and my legs are still sore. Oh uh, dear. And so I'm not, I'm not very outdoorsy, but you, you actually went with, uh, remind me of this. You went on a really big hike. When, when was this? You, I, I have in my memory some social media pictures of you posting stuff. Yeah, we actually, when Danae and Luke were dating, we took, um, Danae and I backpack a lot together, so we took Luke and my dad out into the Rocky Mountains to Mount Assiniboan, which... That's my went... favorite Rocky Mountain. <laughs> it's a good one. So Assiniboan a is trip. real nice. Yep. It was crazy. It was during all those fires, so, you know, we got one day, two days of um, view, and then the rest of it was smoked in, so it was just good. like, okay, cool. Yeah. See, that's why I don't hike. Because the payoff is not worth it ever. <laughs> Luke wants to know who your favorite '90s Canucks player is. I have no answer for that. Um, okay. I apologize. Not a big deal. Luke's the only one who's been asking questions on this. I know. Um. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Uh, what's your favorite kind of tree? Uh, probably a maple tree. Oak was the answer I was going for. <laughs> um. And my final question would be uh, Slurpee flavor. Ooh. Pepsi or root beer? Okay. Like, do you just pick one? I'm really bad whole... at picking favorites. So, oh, yeah. In a Slurpee, I like just one flavor. Mm-hmm. That <laughs> feels psychopathic to me. <laughs> I don't know if I've yeah. seen anyone just with one Slurpee flavor. How many do you mix, Greg? Like, how many are there <laughs> that aren't flavored great is the answer. Okay. You got to mix them all together. You got to make the thing like a little uh, rainbow of colors. It's like a swamp water slip. Yeah. Okay, last question actually is who's your favorite swan? Ah, uh, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Swan. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you so much uh-huh. for your time. Uh, if people want, oh, what's your favorite donut? My favorite yeah. is like an old fashioned sour cream glaze mm, good choice. or like honey donuts, honey's donuts from Deep Cove. Those ones. Okay. Good. I think we answered all the big questions people wanted to hear from you. Uh, if people have, uh, if they want to, you know, get more information on stuff like the Esther series that you're working on and how do people get the discipleship information you guys are working so hard on every week? Um, the... Um, Esther series, like the weekly devotion stuff is all on the Northie website. I'm not actually sure. I'm sure it's on the front page somewhere. Okay. <laughs> or there's a link, I think, in the Instagram you can find it oh, in, great. Uh, on the profile. Fantastic. And then, yeah, work, working on stuff for the fall and coming up for um, what's going to be happening for Bible studies and different things for that. So, we're just, you know, figuring out what it looks like to do ministry with COVID and restrictions and things, and that'll come out as we know it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you're doing a great job. It's, uh, it's, it's great having you part of the team. And uh, from the Sinai Gathering Kitchen to Instagram Live, you have climbed the corporate ladder. <laughs> you too, Greg. You too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Bye.